Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and in today's video I'm back to make another alternative using the March 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thanks so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. As always, if you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you how I made this shaker card alternative. And if you would like to check this out, I do have my March 2020 alternative playlist linked in the description box below. And I will actually link this exact video at the end of this video as a card. For today's card, I am basically using only items that are in your kit. The only exceptions would be my tools that I'm gonna be using. And I will be using one of my full size white card bases to create this card. From the kit, I will be using the large cloud stamp along with the sentiment that says, no matter the weather, we're in this together. I'll also be using the stamp and spot that came with the kit, the basic gray. For the main part of the card, I will be using this pre-printed card that came with the kit the circle punch out that's stitched, the pair of rain boots, and this little floral embellishment. I did forget to get it out right now, but I will also be using the twine that came with the kit. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. So if you come up with any questions that I don't answer, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. To get started, I cut my card base in half and I'll just be using that decorative panel in the front. That made this card three and a half by five inches. Before I can do any more cutting, I am gonna go ahead and do the stamping because I need to stamp this cloud in the background of that pattern piece. Now, because this basic gray ink spot comes out pretty dark, I will be stamping it off on this scrap of paper before I stamp it onto my card. So I'll stamp off and then I'll stamp right onto that card front. And then I just repeat this same process for two more clouds. Now you will notice for my stamping that I pulled out this black Sizzix mat and I think it's called the Stamper Secret Weapon. This is awesome to use when you have clear mount stamps. It gives just that little bit of extra cushion beneath your paper so you get a nice crisp image. Now, if you don't have this, you can always just use an old magazine or an old phone book if you have that and put it under the piece you're stamping and then you'll have a little cushion still. Once that background piece was stamped, I then stamped my sentiment onto the circle die cut. And for this one, I will not be stamping off. I just stamped it at full strength. So the sentiment is nice and clear. Now that all of the stamping is done, I'm gonna start cutting my background panel for the card front. Starting at the top of the piece, I'm gonna cut off five eighths of an inch at a time. So you'll see here that I'm actually using the lines on the left of my trimmer and each time I'm just scooting it down to the five eighths or 0.625 inch mark. That is the mark that is halfway between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch. And then I just trim. You will want to make sure on this, since it is a pattern, that you keep track of your pieces from top to bottom. So later you can get those put on the card front correctly. Now you'll see here in just a second, the guard starts catching where my fingers are. I can no longer hold onto the paper while I trim, but I have a solution for that. You have seen me use it before, but I got out my Scotch blue removable tape and I actually just use a piece that I already had sitting around. I got my paper aligned on the trimmer where I wanted to cut it, stuck that down with the blue tape, and then I could cut this off exactly where I needed it to be. And then later when I pull that tape off my paper, it does not remove any of the image or the coloring. This stuff is very handy. 
Now it is time to start building the card. I pulled in my piece of white cardstock and folded it for my card base. And then I'm gonna start putting those panels or those boards onto my card front. Now every other one almost is just gonna get here directly flat down to the card base. You'll notice here that I have about an eighth of an inch to the left and I left a quarter of an inch or so at the top of the card. And depending on how large you cut your slats or how big your original piece is, you can adjust this. Now my next piece, I'm gonna use that same piece of Scotch Blue removable tape to temporarily hold that in place. That is because later, I'm actually gonna use foam tape to pop this off the card, but I wanna make sure that this next panel that I lay down, it is exactly where it needs to be. Now, once I've laid this third panel down, I can pull up that first and reuse that piece of scotch tape. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of going back and forth on these, and I make sure that each time I place the panel to the right, that I leave the same border on the right of the card as I leave to the left of the panels that are adhered straight down. I continue this until the end, and then you'll notice at the end, the last two panels, because of how I'm gonna decorate it later, get adhered flat down to the card. I do not pop up that final piece. I pulled in the dimensionals from the kit and I placed three dimensionals on the back of each of my panels. Once I had those in place and I had removed the liner, I then placed these onto the card front, making sure that I had the correct panel for where it went and I also made sure the orientation was correct so it would match up with that piece above it. Now that the card base is all ready to be decorated, I pulled out my die cuts and my twine. I cut off, I would say probably 11 or 12 inches of the twine, wrap that around the base of those boots or kind of like the neck, and then I'm gonna tie a little knot. I am not very great with little bitty bows, so I find for me a knot works best. Once that was all done, I then cut my tails so they were even, and then I'm gonna start getting these onto the card front. Once again, I will be using the dimensionals that came with the kit, and because the boot, the bottom does not have one of those panels popped up beneath it, I am gonna use this strip at the side from the dimensionals since that bottom is kind of skinny and wide. This is a great way to get the most out of what they send you in the kit. Now the top of the boots will actually be resting on one of the popped up panels. So I got out my ATG, put a little adhesive at the top of the boots, and then got that adhered down to my card base. Once I was able to find those die cut flowers, which they did hide from me a little bit, it was time to get those put on the card front. Just like the boots, some of these will be adhered directly to the popped up panel and some of it will need some of that foam strip from the dimensional sheet. So I get that all ready with adhesive and get it placed onto my card front. Once the boots and the flowers were placed on the card front, it was time to do the same with the sentiment circle. I used the same process to adhere this as I did with the first two die cut pieces. I used one of the dimensionals and then I added some ATG so that it would be nice and level when it was on the card. I could have stopped here with the card and called it good, but I did go ahead and pull in some of those little clear embellishments from the card kit. Some of them are raindrop shape and others are circles. I did choose the raindrop shape for my card and I think I placed three to five just randomly on the card front. I like the little shine and the extra texture that these give. And here are some close-ups of the final card. Thank you. 
I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my alternative today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.